All right, we're going to get started in one more minute here. Uh, yeah, we'll link the lecture slides on the course website. We'll also um, put links to um, the lecture notebooks so that um, you can uh, watch, you can, you can um, work on your own computer as we go, if you like. Um, we'll record this for anyone who's not here. You can always come back and um, watch the recording later. Uh, for those who are watching on the recording, welcome. It's good to have you here. And it's 11.10, so let's get started. Welcome to Data 8, Foundations of Data Science. Psyched to have you here. This is my favorite class in the world to teach. I'm uh, so glad, and um, I love seeing all the participation on chat. Um, so what I wanted to do today was introduce you to the course and to the folks who are going to be teaching the course and how we're going to run it, and then we'll get started. Um, so first, let me introduce myself um, and um, uh, my co-teacher. So there are two of us who are co-teaching the course, uh, Swipnil Sahai and me. That's me on the left. I'm Dave Wagner. I, um, I, uh, I'm a computer scientist. Uh, my background is in computer security. I, um, I got involved in this class because um, I felt like uh, data science and how to work with data is maybe one of the most important skills that everyone in the world ought to have a chance to be exposed to. Um, and so um, we're trying to make this class accessible to everyone and that really inspires me. And if you're, uh, you know, outside of work, uh, you'll probably see me somewhere around the tennis courts once the smoke clears. Uh, I love to play down in San Pablo Park. I love having your interaction and lecture so um, uh, questions in chat, heckling, um, conversation with other students is great. Um, so I come from a computer science background and um, we're super fortunate to have uh, as co-instructor a uh, Professor Swipnil Sahai. And I wanna ask uh, Swipnil if he would like to uh, introduce himself. Well, I guess I can't hear you, Swipnil. Um, uh, he's here, but we may have some uh, Zoom issues. So for those of you who are playing Zoom bingo on technical issues, you get to make your first checkoff right, right here. Um, uh, so uh, let me introduce Swipnil. You'll hear more from him. Um, uh, Swipnil is, um, uh, comes to us um, with uh, a background both in academia and in industry. Um, He's got a startup uh, working with uh, data science and artificial intelligence. Um, he's worked on AI, he's worked on computer vision, he's worked with um, uh, Tesla. Um, he brings a whole bunch of expertise in statistics. And um, we're super lucky to have this team here of folks, both from um, academia and industry together teaching this class. So we'll be alternating. Um, I'm teaching the first two lectures and you'll see some of me and some of Swipnil and some of me and some of Swipnil. And uh, we're joined by a course staff of over 100 folks. Um, it's the course staff who make the difference. They teach the labs and the discussion sections. So uh, please say thank you and um, don't hesitate to ask them for help. They're awesome. They're amazing. We're here to help you. We love to hear your questions and uh, find out how, what we can do to, to help uh, make your experience better. All right, so let me talk to you a little bit about uh, what this course is all about. Um, we're teaching data science and um, the world is just figuring out exactly what data science ought to mean. So here's a perspective on data science. Um, I think of data science as about um, taking data that we've collected and using that to learn something about the world, gain some understanding about the world, um, maybe uh, make uh, better decisions, um, um, gain actionable information, uh, turn data into something useful. Um, so in this class, you'll see three major themes of uh, data science. First, 
uh, you'll see us, we'll, we'll teach you about um, exploring data, understanding what's in the data. Okay, so the goal here is descriptive in nature, where we want to identify um, what patterns or trends might be present, uh, try to summarize a, a giant mass of data, uh, gain some understanding about what's in there. And um, so, for instance, we'll teach you about um, visualizations, um, we'll teach you um, like how to do different kinds of graphs and charts to help you get a sense of the data, we'll teach you how to summarize the data with uh, uh, statistical measures. Then we'll turn to a topic that's known as inference. And that's kind of a technical term. And what that's referring to is we're trying to draw conclusions about the world. We might have some theories or hypothesis about how maybe the world works. And then we're going to go look and see if the data seems consistent with that. Okay. So inference is about testing um, hunches we have. It's about um, uh, uh, measuring or estimating quantities that we can't, we can't record directly, uh, but that we can infer indirectly from the data. So here's a lot of statistics and we'll see in this class, one of the, one of the themes of data science is this is an emerging discipline that borrows a lot of techniques um, from statistical theory. One of the other things that's unique about this class is that we teach the statistics, uh, not using mathematics, but using uh, computation. So we'll do a lot of work with uh, computation and we'll teach you programming so that you can um, implement all these methods and work with large data sets that you couldn't work with by hand. And then the final third theme we'll see in this class is we'll see um, prediction. And in prediction, um, we're now trying to uh, predict the future. Instead of describe what currently is, we're going to predict what might happen in the future. So it's all about making informed guesses that's informed by the data. And, you know, we can't predict the future perfectly, but we're going to do the best we can. And we're going to try to understand the limits of what, uh, what we can do. So for instance, you're going to learn about uh, machine learning, um, artificial intelligence. Uh, we can't teach you, that's a deep field, but we're just going to give you a, a, a little bit of an introduction to that field so that you get a sense for how that works. Okay, so um, this is uh, what you'll see in this course and um, the semester is laid out basically uh, following these three themes. We'll start with teaching you uh, about exploration and we'll teach you pr some programming and what programming you need to know. Uh, then we'll teach you about inference in the second third of this class and then finally the last third of the semester we'll be looking at prediction. And one of the things that's unique about this course is this is, um, uh, we teach it differently than uh, basically almost anyone else in the world teaches uh, statistics or um, uh, data science. Um, and it's designed to uh, try to uh, make this accessible to everyone. So I'm curious, here's my little test of whether you can use um, uh, reactions in uh, the participants tab. I'm wondering how many of you have no prior experience coding? You've never coded, you've never written computer programs. If that sounds like you, go to the participants tab and click a yes. Just want to see what we got here. I see some of you uh, raising your hand. Um, I'm probably not going to take uh, verbal questions. I'll, I'll probably take them in chat. And if I miss your question in chat, feel free to ask again. Okay, so I see a bunch of you clicking yes. Oh yeah, look at that. 300, more than 300 of you. Um, Um, great. Okay. All right. Lots of you have no prior programming experience. That's awesome. This course is designed for you. It's designed to teach you all the programming you know, you want to um, know. So um, let's, uh, let me ask you another question. How many of you have had um, no experience in math beyond high school math? No calculus, uh, no advanced math. If that sounds like you, go to the participants tab and click yes.
Okay. All right. That's some of you. Um, so if that describes you, um, no problem. Um, this is not a math heavy class. So one of the unique things about how we teach uh, data science here is that um, we try to do it almost entirely without formulas. So the way I learned statistics was this super math intensive course, uh, really intimidating if you don't have a lot of math background. Um, we're, the reason we're teaching you programming is we think we can teach uh, these ideas better uh, without the math. We can help you understand and you won't get distracted too much by having to have a whole bunch of, bunch of mathematical background. So if you not, you don't feel like math is your strong suit, no problem, no worries. We got you covered. We got a better way to teach that doesn't require you to know all that. Okay, so um, let me mention, by the way, um, uh, that we're going to teach you um, some core ideas. Um, we've got um, some statistics and some uh, computing foundations that we'll teach you. Another key part of data science is uh, connector courses. Um, um, so uh, data science, it's really important to know something about the application domain you're working with. If you wanna go study um, COVID vaccines, um, it might be really useful to know how to work with data, but it might also be useful to have some knowledge of uh, public health, epidemiology, biology, um, how the underlying um, uh, uh, medical uh, techniques actually work, how vaccines work. And so um, to be effective at data science, we think you need to know something about the domain you're working in. Um, we can't do, um, do teach every single domain that you might be interested in this course. And we think one of the great ways to learn this is to go take a connector course at the same time. What the connector course does is it's designed to run simultaneously with data eight and expose you to applications in some domain that's of interest to you. Um, we've got several connectors that are available. If you haven't signed up for one, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the options. Um, they uh, are sometimes smaller classes. Um, they're taught by faculty who are excited to teach you about how data science impacts their um, particular domain, their particular uh, area. It's a great way to expose to that area and also get to see the ideas we're showing you in this class in action. So let me give you an intro to some of the connectors that are out there. Um, uh, stats 88 um, is one that you can, uh, do, if you really interested in the statistical theory, uh, develops the theory behind the ideas you see here. So as we go through this class, stats 88 uh, works out some of the mathematics and the statistics foundations underneath it. Uh, CompSci 88 uh, teaches more computer science. If you think you might want to be a uh, computer science major, um, if you think you might want to be a data science major, if you want to might want to go further in computer science, then it's a supplement that teaches you additional uh, computing concepts um, so that uh, if you take data eight plus that connector, then you get everything that you would have been exposed to in the first class for majors for computer science majors. Uh, UGBA 88 will teach you about using data science for management. I think it's full right now. Physics 88 will give you a chance to look at how data science is uh, changing uh, the world of physics and exper especially experimental physics. Um, EPS 88 is a uh, uh, earth and planetary science, uh, an introduction to looking at data science in the context of understanding the planet. That's really cool. Uh, COGSI 88 looks at uh, data science for understanding how the brain works. Um, and there's a data 88, which is looking at uh, data science in the world of economics. Uh, uh, you are welcome to take data, uh, any connector course um, together with data science. And if you missed your chance this semester, you could also take one next semester. All right, thank you all. I welcome, by the way, questions and comments during lecture. Um, I'll do my best to try to respond to them as I see them. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the logistics of the class. Um, uh, the, the way the course is structured, we have a whole bunch of pieces here. We know that uh, you learn um, not just by seeing things, but by practicing. You can find um, our materials um, on the course website. Um, here's the URL. So this is a URL you need. You should be able to get to everything you need from that URL. And uh, maybe I'll even uh, open it up for you so you can see what the course website looks like if you've never been there before. All right, so here you can see the course website 
And um, uh, just to highlight a few things for you, here's a policy here. You can read about our policies. Uh, if you want to find out about when our office hours are, that's up at the top. Um, we have links here to Piazza where you can ask questions and get answers. And then down here, you'll have links to all of our assignments. So everything's online. So you can see, uh, you can access the slides if you wanna watch them on, look at them on your own machine. Um, we'll have uh, lecture recordings. Uh, you can have the, we have a textbook that you can read, get supplemental reading to go with um, what we're teaching you here. Um, you can find access to the labs, the homeworks, the assignments, the projects. Um, so this is the course website. This is where all our materials will be. Um, few key parts of data aid. Uh, we'll record all these lectures. So if this lecture is not a great time for you, um, no problem. Um, then we're glad to um, have you watch the recordings. Um, we're making a bunch of changes this semester, given the new all online format. And by the way, we love it. Thank you so much for signing up for the course when we're all online. I know it's not ideal. We're going to do our best to try to make the course uh, as good as possible, given the online situation. One of the things that I'm trying to do is make sure you don't fall behind. So please, please stay with the schedule. If you do fall behind, ask the course staff for help. We'll help you get caught up. But um, to help you stay on track, um, after each lecture, we have a vitamin. That's a little mini quiz. Um, and that's a way to get some credit, to get some points for staying on track with lectures. This will test to make, see if you're following along in lecture. It'll help us understand if there's any common confusions. Where's the textbook? Ah, yeah, where's the textbook? Um, let me show you where the textbook is. If you click on one of these links, go to the course website and click on a link to a reading, that will take you to the course textbook. So the textbook is all online. It's totally free. It's written by um, uh, the founders of this class, designed specifically for this course. And it's an awesome textbook. It's so good. Okay, so that's how you can get to the textbook. Or if you just want to get there on your own, the domain is inferentialthinking.com. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Inferentialthinking.com will take you to the textbook. Okay. Um, yeah, you were asking about the textbook. Thank you. Um, you'll have a vitamin due Friday. After each lecture, there'll be a vitamin due um, before the next lecture. So right after you finish this lecture, you'll go take the vitamin and get credit for, um, for uh, watching this lecture. The vitamin is just a short couple of questions. You'll see, it's easy. It should take you maybe five or 10 minutes max. Um, for those, if there's someone who can't join because we hit our limit, um, uh, they can watch the recording. We'll upload a recording shortly after the lecture and that's, sorry, we have a, a limit right now on the size that we can take in Zoom. Um, we'll have, you'll have weekly lab assignments. Lab is where you practice all the concepts. We have um, some really great exercises for you. You'll work through them in pairs and we'll have course staff there to help you go through this. Um, so you'll do lab all online. Um, uh, you've hopefully signed up for a lab and discussion section time. If you're enrolled and not on the wait list and you haven't signed up yet, please go to Piazza and um, find the signups and sign up for a time. Lab starts this week. So this Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, go to lab. Uh, lab attendance, the first week is mandatory. You need to be there. Um, we'll get you started. After the first week, um, we strongly encourage you to go to lab. Um, if you, um, for whatever reason, can't attend that particular week, maybe there's something going on in your life. We know stuff happens. Um, we have an alternate way that you can get credit for lab. If you do the lab in advance, before Wednesday lecture, um, online, on your own, um, you won't have help from our course staff, so you have to do it on your own. You have to complete the lab 100%, pass all the tests 100%, then that's an alternate way you can get credit. It's not my first preference, but uh, for how, for, or my first recommendation, I think lab will be useful. In particular, we're trying to encourage you to work in pairs at lab, and I think that's a great way to learn, uh, but we have that alternative option. Um, when you go to lab, we'll pair you up with someone. So there's a chance to meet other people. I know it can be pretty isolating. I hope you'll work in pairs, um, help each other out. One of the things we want to establish in this course is a culture of helping each other out. I think um, uh, what's going to make this course successful is you all, your community. So please help each other. It not only helps others, but it helps yourself. Um, if you find in lab um, you're kind of confused, um, uh, Ask, ask whoever you're paired up with, talk it through with them. Um, ask them, do they understand? Can they help you understand? Talk through what's going on. Um, if you understand more than them, 
um, and they're stuck, a ask them, teach them a little bit, H help them out. What I've discovered is that one of the best ways for me to solidify my own understanding is to try to explain it to someone else or try to help them. And if I'm a little bit shaky on the concepts, that really comes out when helping them. So by helping other people, you're actually helping yourself. You'll find a link to the vitamin um, online on the course webpage. Um, if you, uh, right after class, if you go to the course webpage, there'll be a link to vitamin one. You click on that. So vitamins meant to be done after, after class. All right, so that's labs, weekly labs. Um, by the way, if you don't finish lab uh, within the hour and a half session time, we'll also have some extra time slots on Friday where you can go on Friday um, optionally, um, show up on, to one of our finish up lab, lab sessions. You don't have to sign up, just show up. We'll have course staff there to help you out with any questions you got. It gives you a little more time if you want. We know some people like to have a little more time to finish it so they're not stressed. Glad to have you there. You'll also be doing a weekly discussion section um, so every week you'll have a half hour discussion section. If you haven't signed up for a time yet and you're enrolled, please go sign up. Um, this is key. This is going to be um, where you're going to get to learn in a small group setting, uh, six students. Um, you'll work through some practice problems, learn some conceptual stuff. You'll have a TA there to help you. Um, this is a great chance to meet other students. Maybe you'll meet some folks and, uh, you know, be a way to form a study group. Uh, so, uh, we hope you'll go to, so discussion and discussions at the attendance and discussion section is mandatory. So go every week. Um, if you're on the wait list, we have, uh, you can't sign up yet until you're enrolled, but we will have um, uh, extra lab and, sec and discussion sections for people on the wait list over the weekend. So go look on Piazza and you'll find links. Uh, you don't need to sign up, just show up. You'll have weekly homework assignments where you'll get to practice the materials to do those on your own. And we'll have projects, three projects that are larger. They'll be about two weeks long. You'll work on those with a partner. We have some time set aside in labs for you to work on that with a project partner in lab. And this is, this is a chance to apply uh, your concepts to some uh, really cool data sets and case studies and, and, and practice, uh, practice this. Why is discussion so, so short? So short. Um, we know that working in Zoom is hard. So we wanted to set up a setting where you could have a small group, just five or six of you. Uh, you could make it really easy to have super, something super interactive. And to make that possible, we had to keep discussion sections short. Um, this is how we've always run the courses. We always have about a half an hour of working on practice and conceptual problems uh, together as a group, and then about an hour and a half of, of working in pairs or on your own on some, on some, uh, on some, uh, more hands-on um, technical uh, practice. You can find links to your discussion section in your lab on Piazza. Finally, we'll have office hours. Um, uh, if you want help, come to our office hours. We have tons of office hours. We love to help you. Um, maybe you're stuck on something and you need help getting unstuck, come, come visit us in office hours. Maybe you want um, um, some help understanding some concepts, a little bit confusing, come to office hours. Um, we'll have a bunch of office hours where you get one-on-one -on -one help. You sign up, there's an online queue. You sign up for the queue. Um, and then um, you kind of first come, first served. Um, one of the course staff will come, come help you out on Zoom. Uh, we also have group office hours. We have a few hours for group office hours. If you like, just like being part of a group, hearing what questions other people are asking, uh, come to our group office hours. It's, um, it's pretty low key. There's um, you know, we're not going to put you on the spot. Um, you can come ask uh, questions. Here are questions other people are asking and uh, get help from the TAs. That's probably better for more conceptual stuff. Um, midterm, not finalized yet. Tentatively Friday, March 16th, but this could change. We're, um, we're trying to figure out the distribution of time zone and work out a plan for all of you who are in different time zones. Uh, not March, October. Ah, <laughs> yuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And final exam, uh, day is final, uh, Monday, uh, December 14th. Um, so put that one in your calendar. Uh, details on our course policies uh, you can find on the website. Uh, so go read that for questions. Um, I want you to help each other out. So uh, please, uh, Feel free to ask course staff question or to ask your fellow students. That's super encouraged. If you're confused on something, uh, puzzle it out with each other. I find that you probably learn more from each other than you'll learn from me. Um, 
as much as I wish it was otherwise. Um, you're welcome to discuss questions with each other. You're welcome to discuss the concepts you're learning or the homework problems. Um, but um, uh, you're welcome to discuss the lab problems with each other. But um, what you finally turn in for lab assignments and homeworks must be your own. You can discuss the questions on homeworks, but what you write your own solutions on homeworks needs to be your own. You should never um, show um, uh, anyone else um, your solutions. Okay, so you shouldn't be um, handing someone a copy of your homework solutions so they can compare. Um, you shouldn't be um, like showing them your solutions and and um, uh, you know like side by side comparing what you got. Uh, so talk it over, but uh, your keep your solutions to yourself. Your solutions are your own. Um, projects, you'll have a chance to work with a partner. Um, uh, and there with your partner, um, you'll do all the work together. Okay, so that's the one exception. Uh, if you have questions about that, please feel free to ask on Piazza. We'd love to help you figure out uh, the boundary between collaboration and, and what's okay and what's not okay. Uh, copying solutions off of anyone else is definitely not okay. Uh, if you have anyone else's solutions even in your possession, uh, you may be subject to uh, reporting for academic misconduct. So don't do that. Um, if you want help, you can ask a friend, someone you know in the class. Awesome. You can ask us. Uh, one way to ask us is ask on Piazza. Please don't send us emails. We get overwhelmed with emails. But ask on Piazza. We have a whole bunch of course staff there who are helping. You can help each other out on Piazza. This is our, our, um, our uh, discussion forum. Um, you can also search, maybe other people have the same question. Uh, we'll get you an answer super fast. Um, you can come to office hours. We'd be delighted to have you in office hours. It's super fun to see you there. Um, I know it can be intimidating, but we're mostly pretty friendly people. We like seeing you there. Even, you know, don't worry about feeling stupid. Even if you're not sure what you wanna ask or or what's going on, just want to come visit us, that's cool. We love seeing you in office hours. Uh, there will be lab this week. There is no discussion section this week. All right, so uh, if I kind of summarize, you're here to learn, help each other learn, build a community, support each other. Um, come ask your course staff for help. Our course staff is awesome. Um, read our policies page for more. Uh, let me check in how you doing. Um, uh, do we have questions right now that you want answered before I continue? Uh, data scholars uh, sections, I think, believe next week. Biggest ways of getting points towards um, the final grade. Um, uh, you can look at the grading breakdown on our policies page. Um, Keep up to date with the class, turn in every assignment. Um, for labs, even if you don't get a perfect, if you show up and you make a serious effort, you get full credit. Um, do all the lectures and the vitamins, there's easy points there. Come to discussion sections, you get points for attendance, that's easy. And then um, do your best on homeworks and, and projects and that will get you well prepared for, for, for exams. Do you have a homework due this week? Nope, homework one will be due next Thursday. So homework one will be out this Friday. How do you sign up for waitlist lab? Don't need to sign up, just show up. Time limit for vitamins? Yep, you gotta finish the vitamin before the next lecture. Can you choose your own lab partners? Nope, we're gonna pair you up randomly. If you have a particular preference, uh, when you show up, um, um, uh, leave a note in chat for, the, for whoever's leading lab and maybe they'll try to accommodate you. But we're also trying to switch you around so you get to work with different people. Um, are there links for discussions? Not yet. Um, you can find on Piazza the Zoom links for discussions. Um, but discussions don't start till next week. Um, Data Scholars Program is um, a way that we support folks in one of the more intensive program and also support diversity. Um, unfortunately, the application deadline for that for this semester is passed, uh, but for next semester, there is a program you can join. Um, it gives you a even better uh, community and work closely with others, extra support. Uh, are the labs due on Friday? Labs you do in, in, in lab. So show up in lab and do the lab right there. Uh, if you don't want to go to lab, if you can't go to lab, well, lab attendance is mandatory this week. After this week, if you, for some reason, can't make lab any particular week, then see the policies page. You need to complete lab before Wednesday. You need to pass 100% of the tests. You need to do it on your own. 
Um, homework will be released on Friday and due the next Thursday. Uh, what's the purpose of finished up labs? Well, we've heard feedback um, in past semesters that students find the labs really helpful practice. And so they like the chance to have a little more time to work through the practice sessions and get help from, from course staff. So that's, that's why they're there. Um, it's optional. If it's not useful to you, that's okay. If you're finding your learning and material without that, that's good too. Oh, maybe Data Scholars starts this week. If you're, uh, if you're applied to Data Scholars, watch your email. I believe emails are going out right around now for people being admitted into Data Scholars. Discussion section Zoom links are uh, released on Piazza. Uh, the secret word for labs, um, this is the way we do checkoffs to show that you were present in lab and you uh, worked on the lab. Discussion section timing, same every week. You sign up for a discussion section time, it'll be the same one every week. You'll attend uh, lab and discussion section by Zoom. So you'll click on the link uh, that you could find on Piazza. There is lab this week, go to lab this week. Don't miss it. There's no time limit on the vitamin beyond um, finishing it before next lecture. So if you open it, it's not like it's gonna shut you down within 10 minutes. How does checking off work in labs? When you show up in labs, they'll tell you, they'll tell you what to do. You'll, you'll submit um, the notebook. Uh, we work with uh, 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 in your browser. And in your browser, you work with something called a notebook where you do your code and you do the exercises. And then you upload that to our servers uh, and that uh, gets you credit for it. So you'll submit and then also uh, you'll get checked off with uh, one, of the, one of the course staff who's working in the lab and they'll, they'll record you as having attended. All right. Um, lots more questions. Um, I think uh, maybe I'm going to move on with lecture. And then if you got more questions, then uh, ask on Piazza. And if you can't figure it out from the course webpage, and we're very glad to help you out. Sorry, I couldn't get to all everything that you had. All right. So um, we like to give you examples in lecture um, where we work through um, seeing you apply these concepts. And um, we work, um, all the work you do is going to be with. Um, uh, it's going to be, uh, you're going to be working in Python. This is a programming language called Python and on an environment that's called Jupyter. And what that does is it lets you uh, write code and work with data um, from your web browser. The web browsers connect to our servers. And then um, uh, on our servers, you can run code and you can run code that will uh, work with data. And we'll be teaching you how to do this. And so uh, today I'm not going to teach you how to write the code. So don't worry if you see a bunch of code that looks like gibberish. Um, we'll be teaching this. I just want to give you a sense, a demo of what you'll learn how to do, the kind of thing you'll learn how to do in this class. So this is a Jupyter notebook, what you're seeing on the screen right now. This is an interactive environment for working with data. Um, um, some things about Jupyter notebooks that you can see. What you see up here is called a cell. Each one of these areas here is called a cell. And that's a place where you can write in some code, some Python code to work with data. And then you can run that cell. And when you run the cell, whoops, that's not the cell I wanted to run. Uh, when you run a cell, um, uh, you may see some, um, whatever the results of that were. So one thing you can use Python for is a simple calculator. So I can type in something like three plus five and it tells me that the answer is eight. And if I need some more cells, I can create another one and I could say, well, what about three times five? Um, and then I run that. And right below that is the results that the computer gives me. The Python ran that and said, oh, three times five is 15. Okay, so this is an interactive environment. Um, it's running on our servers, so it has all the computational power of our servers. Um, at the top, there's a cell here with a bunch of boilerplate stuff that's going to look like gibberish and don't worry about it. This just gets set up the computing environment. We'll have one of those boilerplates at the top of every one of these notebooks and you'll just run it and you won't stress about what it means. You don't need to worry about that. Up here, you can find um, um, menus that let you interact with this uh, notebook. Um, okay. so. Let me show you some things you could do. Um, for instance, I'm going to, um, I prepared some code here um, that what it's going to do is it's going to load in the text of Huckleberry Finn. Um, uh, Mark the book by Mark Twain. 
and um, and it reads it into the computer and um, splits. I've written some code to split that up into chapters. So um, uh, here is just an enormous amount of text from that book. And um, we're going to work with um, uh, the way we're going to organize data uh, in this class is using tables. So a table has some columns and it has some rows. And this is a very simple table that has just one column. You can think of tables as kind of like a spreadsheet. Um, we're gonna, that's a way of organizing the data. And I organize this a very simple way. I've got one row per uh, chapter of the book. And you can see here, chapter one starts with, you don't know about me without you've read a book and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, now, um, once we've got it in this computing environment, we can um, ask Python to do some uh, computation on it. And computers are really great whenever you have a very simple operation that you need done a lot of times. You could do it yourself, but it'd be really tedious. So for instance, suppose I wanted to know um, something about the characters in the book. Well, um, if you've run Huckleberry Finn, you know some of the characters. There's Huck, of course, um, the title character, and there's Tom, and there's Jim. And uh, maybe we might want to start by getting a sense of how important these characters are by counting uh, how many times each of the one each of them is mentioned. So let's ask the computer to do that. We could do that by laboriously um, walking through the book and counting how many times Tom is mentioned. Um, but um, uh, we'll ask the computer to do that. That's a tedious task and computers are really good at doing some simple thing over and over again. And here this tells us, well, Tom was mentioned six times in the first chapter and 24 times in the second chapter and five times in the third chapter and then isn't mentioned for a while and then is mentioned some and not mentioned for a while. And um, I pre-prepared some code here, but um, you can enter in your own code into a cell and then uh, run it. So I'll run the same code, but now let's look at Jim. And you notice I didn't press run and that's because, well, I could have pressed run, but uh, there's some keyboard shortcuts here um, that uh, saved me from having to do a bunch of, of mouse work. And so if you're curious about the keyboard shortcuts, you can find out from them with help keyboard shortcuts. And the most basic one to know is if you press shift enter in a cell, it will uh, run the cell and show you the output, show you the result. So here, Jim, you can see Jim's mentioned a lot more. Jim, look at these counts. Many of these counts are higher than, um, than Tom. So maybe Jim is a little bit more important. Maybe, maybe that tells us something about the characters. And um, you, we, this is getting a little tedious. I could do the same thing again for Huck and for everyone else I can think of, but maybe let's, uh, let's do that same thing and now organize it, organize it in a table. And um, we're gonna give you um, some code that will um, show you how to write code that will let you do that and do that for each of a bunch of characters and then put that in a table. So here we have a table with a column per character, a row per chapter. And this shows us, for instance, in chapter two, Tom's mentioned 24 times, Jim 16 times, and Huck only two times. Even though the Huckleberry's the title in the title, somehow not mentioned as often. Any ideas why that might be? Why do you think Huck is, shows up less often? Anyone want to type in chat what their thoughts are and why? Yeah, first person book. It's from the point of view, Huck's point of view. So he's going to say I, he's not going to say Huck. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Awesome. All right, so um, now looking at that table is a little painful. There's a lot of numbers there. It's get, hard to get a sense of what the trends are. So we're gonna teach you how to do visualizations. So uh, now I'm gonna construct the same table and then we're gonna um, make a visualization. We're gonna make a plot here. This is a, a, a line graph here. Um, and this is a plot that shows you for each chapter um, how many times um, uh, that character's name has been mentioned. So for instance, I. By chapter 20, how many times has Huck been mentioned in the first 20 chapters? How many times is Tom? How many times is Jim? Okay, so you can see, you can see maybe some trends here that, that Tom becomes very important in the last 10 chapters. He gets mentioned a lot in the last 10 chapters. Uh, uh, let's take another example. Um, 
Has anyone, I don't know, has anyone here read Little Women? Um, if you haven't, it's a, a lovely, uh, a delightful book about um, four uh, young sisters, super poor, and um, growing up, growing up in poverty um, in the, I guess, 1800s. And um, the characters are just, just so fun. It's just fun to spend time with them. And there's uh, four sisters. There's um, Joe, Meg, uh oh gosh who else uh uh amy and beth ah <laughs> yes um and you can see here we've read that into the computer um uh, split it by chapters and then we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna look at how often each one of these uh, uh uh these sisters is mentioned um maybe maybe you have a favorite um and then we'll put it into a table um, and then um, we'll do the same thing. We'll plot the counts. And um, I'll also include Lori. And Lori's not one of the four sisters. Um, Lori is, um, uh, well, he starts out, he's a boy next door. He's a, he, they, they, who's um, kind of friends, comes friends with the sisters and has a, a relationship with them. Um, uh, eventually ends up uh, dating um, and, uh, well, um, marrying one of the sisters. Um, so he also shows up a bunch in in the book. And um, here is a visualization of how many times um, uh, each, each of those is mentioned in the book, uh, cumulative. So for instance, you can see by chapter 20, uh, green is Lori, has been mentioned about um, 250 times in the first 20 chapters, whereas uh, Joe has been mentioned about I don't know what that is. Maybe that's 650, 700 times. All right. So you can see that Joe gets a lot of airtime in this uh, textbook. And a lot, of, a lot of folks love, love Joe. She, in some sense, she's maybe the, the main character of the book, if there is one. Um, OK. And um, fun story. They start out as girls. And then you know they starts out with um, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without presents. And they can't afford any presence. They're, they're super poor. And then it, you know, follows them as they grow up and they turn into adults and the different choices they make. Now I mentioned that um, Lori ends up marrying, um, dating and marrying one of the sisters. I want you to look at this graph and see if you can figure out who Lori marries. Look from the graph and see if you can see anything in that graph that tells you who he marries. It is a spoiler. <laughs> Everyone who's read it knows instantly, but if you haven't read it, how could you figure out who Lori marries? Yeah, yeah, oh man, nailed it. Lines are really close. What does it mean when the lines are really close? Well, when the lines are really close, it means they're mentioned around the same time. So in chapters where Lori is mentioned, you'll see here, Amy, Lori is the green line. Amy is the blue line that's really close. There's some chapters where this, this green line goes up a bit, right? Um, that means that Lori is getting mentioned in those chapters. And also in those chapters, um, Amy's line is going up. And then there's some chapters where it's flat. That means Lori isn't mentioned in that chapter. And then Amy's is also flat for that same chapter. She's not getting mentioned in that chapter. So what you can see from the fact that these lines, these two lines both go up or stay flat together indicates that when Lori's mentioned, Amy's also mentioned and vice versa. They're kind of mentioned at the same time, which makes sense. They're a couple. And so, um, uh, you know, they get mentioned together. All right. So this kind of illustrates how uh, visualizations can let you very quickly um, uh, see some trends and some patterns that let you draw inferences that um, would be a lot more efficient. Uh, it can be a lot more efficient than reading the whole book, although you miss out on the whole experience of reading the book. For those of you who would like to follow along with these demos, uh, all of these demos will be online. Um, you don't have to just watch. You can interact and modify these notebooks. Um, you can get your own copy of this notebook. So let me show you how you can do that. If you go to the course webpage, you will find, uh, well, we haven't linked it um, today, 
Um, we didn't get our, our act together in time. I didn't get my act together in time before lecture, but um, most lectures, we will put a link before lecture um, uh, right here on the course web page. Well, there'll be a link here. It's a link to the demo notebook and you can click on that link. That link will make a copy of that notebook in your own Jupyter environment um, and load it up on your, on your, on your um, web, uh, web browser. And then you can make your own modifications. It's your own copy. It won't, it won't hurt anything. It won't, it won't affect anyone else. Um, and you can run the cells and see what happens if you change some of the numbers in there and see what, if you make your own modifications, play with it, experiment. And, and uh, you know, there's no, no, you don't have to worry, no harm done. All right, so um, continuing back in this demo notebook. Um, Um, another thing we could do with this, with this uh, book is we could, might be curious about um, the author's writing patterns. For instance, some authors like to write really convoluted sentences. Some authors like to write um, uh, short declarative stuff, you know, especially action books. Uh, he punched her or him, uh, you know, he ran across the room, short books, punchy. Um, so to get a sense for that, what we could do is, um, well, we can count things. One thing is the computers are really good at doing it, counting things. So let's look at, try counting some stuff. And uh, uh, we've got here some pre-written code that, oh my gosh, it's a lot to absorb. Don't worry if none of this makes any sense to you, but let me just tell you what this code is doing. Um, and later in the class, you'll learn, you'll learn what this is doing. This is running through each chapter and for each chapter, it's counting the number of periods in that chapter and it's counting um, the number of um, uh, characters, like letters uh, or spaces or numbers um, in that chapter. Um, so we counted that and then we put that into a table um, here that shows uh, for each chapter we have that. So for instance, chapter one has uh, 7,000 characters, like a character is like a letter or a space or a number, and it has 66 periods. So what can you infer about how many sentences are present in chapter one? Yeah, about 66. I don't know, maybe it's not exactly, like if there's a sentence that ends in an exclamation mark, we didn't count that, oops. But it's pretty close, right, probably. Okay, so chapter one, you can tell it's pretty short, not a lot of sentences, 66, 70. Like chapter, whatever this is, I don't know, eight or 10 is like, whoa, that's a much longer beast. There must be a lot happening in that one. Um, Okay, so uh, Python will then let us um, uh, also do the same thing um, uh, for Little Women. And Little Women, we can see, um, okay, chapter one and Little Women's longer. Longer than, so sorry, I didn't mention this. The first chapter is for Huckleberry Finn. The first table is for Huckleberry Finn. I can't talk today. And the second table is for Little Women. You can see here the chapters um, in Little Women, many of them are, are a bit longer, like chapter one might have about 190 sentences, maybe it's 200. Um, what's important? No, this, this individual functions are not super important. What I wanna expose you to soon is the, the concept of organizing your data in tables, that's important. Making visualizations, that's important. How we can draw inferences from the data we're looking at, uh, that's important. Okay, so now if I plot all this, what I can do is I can do a different kind of visualization. This one's called a scatter plot. And um, in this scatter plot, um, each dot here represents a chapter in one of the two books. And um, uh, how far to the right the dot is on the x-axis indicates the number of periods in that chapter, basically the number of sentences. And on the y-axis is the number of characters, like the length of that chapter. And we have here in, um, let's see, uh, I think blue is Huckleberry Finn and yellow is Little Women. And you can notice a trend here. Maybe this trend makes sense. Yeah, you're not understand, understand the code. Maybe the trend is kind of intuitive that the more sentences a chapter has, the longer it is in terms of number of characters. Well, that kind of makes sense, duh. I mean, each sentence, you know, has a certain length and it adds to it. 
So for instance, one thing you could infer from this is from the slope of these lines, you could infer about how many characters are in an average sentence. And you could do that for the blue ones, and you would learn something about that, um, how long a typical sentence is for Mark Twain. And uh, you could do that for the yellow ones, and you would learn how long a typical sentence is for, um, oh gosh, who wrote Little Women? Whoever wrote Little, Little Women. And you might notice that these lines look very similar. And so what we're learning here is that there, maybe there's something that's characteristic of English language, that there's a typical length of a sentence um, that's pretty common and that's uh, common among many writers. All right, so that's an example. Don't worry if you didn't understand the code. Um, uh, what I'd like to do now is jump back to my slides wherever they are. Um, and jump to the last slide and wrap up for today. Okay, well, my browser loads. So uh, your call to action now, what I want you to do from here on in, um, if you haven't signed up for a lab or discussion section and you're enrolled, please do that. Um, what I'd like you to do right after lecture is take uh, the first vitamin. Um, we'll load the vitamin on the course website. So please take that. There's a mini quiz, you get credit. Um, and then um, please go to lab. We'll see you in lab this Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. And uh, we'll see you on lecture on Friday. Great to see you all and uh, welcome to the fall semester. Bye. <laughs>